Good morning everyone and welcome to our morning inspiration. It is Thursday, February 15, 2024. I hope that everyone is having a wonderful morning. I hope that you are in good health and I hope that you had a good night's rest. And as you go through this day, may you allow the Lord to be your guide and may you depend on him to see you through. Our reading today comes to us from Matthew chapter 19 and we will read from verse 3 to 9. It says, The Pharisees also came unto him, tempting him, and saying unto him, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for any cause? And he answered and said unto them, Have ye not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female and said for this cause a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife and they twain shall be one flesh wherefore they are no more twain but one flesh what therefore god had joined together let no man put asunder they said unto him why did moses then command to give a writing of divorcement and to put her away he said unto them, Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts, suffered you to put away your wives. But from the beginning it was not so. Verse 9 says, And I say unto you, Whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication, and shall marry another, committed adultery. And whoso marry her, which is put away, doth commit adultery. And I say, Amen. We give God thanks for his holy word and as we read this morning, may we allow the Holy Spirit to give us understanding and give us wisdom as we seek to commit ourselves to his word. Now the reading today is speaking about marriage. The Pharisees came to him so they asked him a question as it relates to marriage. You heard the question that I read earlier. Should a man put away his wife or is it okay to get a divorce now they all knew what was the stuff where this is concerned and jesus responded with a very interesting question he, he responded by saying that from the beginning from creation god has established that foundation of marriage scripture says that a man and a woman is what makes up a marriage male and female it also states that when a man and a woman gets married they should leave their mother and father house or leave their parents house it also states that when a man and a woman gets married that they now are joined together as one so they become one what does the word of God mean when it says they become one? Is it that they are now joined together at the hip or their flesh merged together? No, certainly not. When it says they are now one, it means that they, they are now a team that work together. So they don't act independently of themselves anymore. Even though they are individual, they work together as one. So the husband don't go and do as he please and the wife don't go and do as she please. The decision that is made must be made with both approval. So if the husband do something, it must be that it is something that the wife would approve of and, and vice versa. So stuff like that. So it's about unifying in mind and in action doesn't take away from your individuality that's an entirely different thing but now you operate as one person not two person so that's what the bible mean when it talks about they become one the question is asked if it is not okay then for a man to put away his wife why then did moses give the okay for us to give a bill of divorcement to our wife and not just put her away like that and you heard what Jesus say? Jesus said because what? Of the hardness of the heart. Because we refuse to forgive 
Because we refused to reconcile, that is why we were given that opportunity to give a bill of divorcement. But divorce is not something that God agrees with. So in the eyes of God, even though you are divorced, you are still married. That's how serious God takes marriage. And that is why people must not enter into marriage frivolously and enter into marriage like it's a game of hide and seek. This is not a game. And when you look at marriage today, a lot of us, a lot of folks are farming full of themselves. They are making a mockery out of the institution and they are giving a wrong picture of what marriage really is. So many of us make marriage look like it's a prison sentence. That is such a gruesome picture to paint. Marriage is nothing like that. Marriage is one of the most beautiful experiences that life have to offer. And when it is entered into with the right attitude and within the right context, you will experience the fullness of joy that you are supposed to experience. And it won't feel like you just sentence yourself to life imprisonment. Because it's not. When two people love each other, I always tell people that love can conquer anything. And people used to look at me. When I used to say it, people laugh at me and they jeer and they mock me and they make me look like I'm talking rubbish. But I sincerely believe from the bottom of my heart that love can conquer any problem that we have. And if that's not true, then we make the Bible a liar and we make God a liar. Divorce is not something that we should, you know, store in the back of our mind and say, all right then, you know, just in case things don't work out, I'm going to do this. I'm going to get a divorce. No, no, don't get me wrong. I am not saying to any of you or to anyone that if you are in a bad situation, for example, if you are in an abusive relationship where your husband is beating you or your wife is beating you, whether it is emotional abuse, physical abuse or whatever, I'm not saying that you should sit down in the situation like a crazy person and let the person beat upon you. No, because the same Bible that says that divorce is not the ideal plan, the same Bible says that what? When you love somebody, you don't abuse them. Do you understand what I'm saying? So if your partner or if your wife or your husband is abusing you or beating up on you, they don't love you. Or they have a misunderstanding of what love is. And they need to be re-educated as to what love truly is. And so friends, don't let anybody paint a negative picture in your mind about marriage. For those of us who are married, we know that it's a beautiful experience and it's not a perfect world you will have ups and downs in your marriage but how you choose to go about it will either help you to make it stronger or to break it and if god is not the center of your marriage and your relationship you are already heading for disaster so it's a lot to to really talk about here but i'm gonna leave some of it for another time so what am i saying my final point is this don't use divorce as a crutch to run from your problem first try to work your marriage out before you divorce so make sure that when you divorce it is that you have done all that you can do and there's just no other way and i'm speaking especially if the person is abusing you no the bible gave the context in which you it's okay to, to 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 file for divorce if the person have cheated on you or if the person is having an extramarital affair then yes 
you get the okay if you choose to doesn't mean that you have to but if you choose to you can get a bill of divorce because what you are in your because the person already broken the marriage vow by doing that so may we use these things to help us to make wise decision right and do not let anybody fool you or fool your head of any crazy thought and any nonsense that if you're in an abusive relationship you won't sit down in there no according to who where did you get that no god don't subscribe to those kind of lifestyle and living and that is why every relationship must be entered into with prayer and fasting and the guidance of the holy spirit so that we don't find ourselves in situations like those where we are suffering in our marriage and in our relationship instead of it being a blessing so may god continue to bless you and may god continue to keep you as we continue to work together with our spouses as we look for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.